And Perk, I'd like to start with you. How does Draymond's suspension impact Steph Curry specifically? Well, Molly, the other night I tweeted out when the incident happened, free Steph Curry. And free Steph Curry from all the BS that he's surrounded with right now. And it's not just Draymond Green. We harped on Klay Thompson and what he's going through right now for us, his contract situation and how he's not, you know, the Klay Thompson that we have grown to love and, and for us, his basketball, you know, what he brings on the court. But then you look at Andrew Wiggins, a guy that when they won their last championship, it, you know, one that was the second best player on the team. He, has, he looked like he has no interest in playing the game of basketball. So we're watching Steph Curry. And we're watching him and what he's doing right now, playing at the elite level. You know, him and LeBron James and Kevin Durant are still holding it down for the OGs because these young boys are coming. But when I think about Steph right now, we don't need to be wasting these valuable years of Steph Curry. Steph Curry needs to be competing for a title. And right now, he doesn't have the personnel around him. Outside of Draymond Green actions, and what he did over the last, since the start of the season, I'm talking about the altercations, his offensive game and defensive game has been on the, on the, de on the decline, right? He's not the player of old when it comes to defensively making the impact, and offensively, he's allergic to the basket. So when I think about Steph right now, they have to figure out something. When you think about a generational talent that you have on your roster and Steph Curry to make sure you put the pieces around him that he could compete in a tough Western Conference. Wendy? Even if there was no Draymond Green issues on this roster this year, even if he had played every game and his record was unblemished, this would be a massively important year for the Warriors. It was set up that way. It is the last year of Steve Kerr's contract. Bob Myers has left the organization. It is the last year of Clay Thompson's contract. They did extend Draymond and they did extend Andrew Wiggins at pay cuts. They got rid of Jordan Poole. I know they brought in Chris Paul, but essentially that was an accounting move to clear the books to try to make things more feasible past this year. All of the chips are on the table for this season, which is one of the reasons why Draymond's behavior has been so disappointing. He clearly understands what they're holding, that at $400 million, with a bunch of new rules that are basically the Warriors' rules. It's sort of for the Warriors and the Clippers, but there's these anti-super team rules that, have been, that, have, that are in the middle of being phased in that just make it very, very hard for this team to, to, to remain together. So all of that is on the table. Steph Curry is delivering. After that... There's nothing, there's nobody taking care of their end of the bargain. Other than Joe Lacob, who's writing the checks, nobody's holding up their end of the bargain. Draymond Green is letting him down, absolutely. Andrew Wiggins is letting him down. Clay Thompson is letting him down. Some of the young players have let him down. Chris Paul hasn't been the impact that they wanted. They are not getting everybody else playing at the Steph Curry level. Now, I will say this. We are in December. When you look at the teams ahead of them in the standings, there's very few teams in there that you say, oh my gosh, that's a hor horribly scary team. By the way, the Clippers are moving in that direction. That's who they play tonight. They are looking good. Kawhi Leonard is regaining his form, and that should put the whole league on notice. But other than the Denver Nuggets, and even the Nuggets have shown some, some flaws this season, there's nobody that you say, oh my gosh, they are insurmountable. So because of that, I don't think you pull the ripcord, and that includes Draymond. I think the Warriors try everything they possibly can to get Draymond back in the fold in a good place, in a good headspace where he can be the player he is. I think you work to find the Clay Thompson form that he had at the end of last season. You work to reactivate Wiggins, to, to marry him up with this version of Steph Curry. But if we get to the end of this year and all of that fails, we're going to be having different conversations. But I don't think we're there yet. Now, please understand something. And, and Peter Guber, by the way, uh, who's extraordinary on so many levels, I know him well. Um, these dudes don't play. And I'm not speculating. I don't have to talk to talk to them at this particular moment to tell you what they're thinking. I know them. I can tell you right now what Joe Lacob is thinking. I have to protect my franchise. Enough's enough. I don't have time for this. That's what he's thinking right now. And so what happens is when you talk about protecting the franchise, ladies and gentlemen out there watching this show, 
I would ask you to pay rapt attention to the kind of things that Brian Wintour just broke down for you because he gave you the numbers. He gave you the contract situation. He gave you the state of affairs. He gave you the numbers that Joe Lakeup is doling out and Peter Goober is doling out, the kind of money they're paying in luxury tax and beyond. These are businessmen. You see, there's so many people that's out there. They look at you, KP. They look at us. They look at you, Wendy. Oh, man, y'all ain't being real. Y'all ain't being a thinker. No, yes, we, we're being real. We're not being dumb. We're not devoid of what, biz, what comes with business. And, and this is the thing that drives me crazy. You look at a situation. I'm from the streets of New York City. You're from Beaumont, Texas, KP, what have you. I don't give a damn what streets you're from. If somebody costs you dollars, you got to add it to. Well, how much money do you think they're being cost? I mean, if, you, if you're Joe Laker, what are you thinking about? The hundreds of millions of dollars that you're projecting, that chase into that arena that you built in downtown San Francisco, the money that you thought you were going to bring in and what have you, you had aspirations. Now, if your star fades, that's different. Steph Curry's not, he's not healthy. He gets hurt. He can't do what he does. That's different. The brother looks all world. So I got my superstar, who's my box office attraction, who's playing like a superstar and a box office attraction, and somebody else is messing this up. What? You can't have that. We got a situation with Klay Thompson. 34 point. I hope, boy, I hope he's watching because, listen, I challenge anybody. I got relatives of Clay Thompson that have come up to me. They know how much love I got for this brother. I have always believed in Clay Thompson. What the hell is wrong with him? 34.3% shooting from three-point range, a career worst. First eight years in this league, nine of his first ten years in this league. This man has shot better than 40% from three-point range. What the hell are you doing? I'm looking. I got this study. When do you appreciate this? Ready for this perk? Of the 77 players with at least 250 field goal attempts this season, Clay Thompson, one of the top five shooters in NBA history in my estimation, has the second worst field goal percentage shooting at 39.7%. Only Fred Van Vliet is worse. You got to be kidding me. This is what we're talking about here. So then you couple all of that with Draymond getting into these issues. I assure you, I, are you ready for this, Perk? I'll bet my check on it. You don't hear me say that. You don't hear me say something like that. <laughs> I will bet my check on it. I promise you. I promise you. All of this basketball stuff everybody talking about, oh, no, that's going to get usurped by business decision. Protecting the franchise. Remember those three words. Protecting the franchise. Those three words. Remember I said it. Because that is going to influence the decisions that are coming down the pike in the days and the weeks to come. Stephen A. said it. You can book it. I know this man. And rightfully so. But, but I say, uh, Wendy, let me say this. We, we took a deep dive into Andrew Wiggins, Draymond Green, Clay Thompson, and rightfully so because – they have not been playing up the par. Matter of fact, they've been stinking to join up. I get it. But Steve Kerr is not exempt from this either. And when I think about Steve Kerr and I think about all the other coaches in the NBA, I'm watching coaches imp like put in younger guys into their championship contender teams, right, to also give these young guys valuable minutes, be able to play through their mistakes. I said this at the start of the season. The Golden State Warriors are the only team right now that's out there contending for a championship but are not building for the future. When is Steve Kerr going to start, you know, trusting Jonathan Gaminga enough where he's going to allow this man to play through his mistakes and give him extended minutes? They did draft him in the lottery. Moses Moody. What about Moses Moody? Can he get extended minutes? They draft him with a lottery pick. And so when I think about the direction, yes, you want to continue to respect what Draymond Green and Klay Thompson and Andrew Wiggins has done for the organization, but you also want to look at the future. You want to give these guys an opportunity. And I will say that Steve Kerr, he has to have some blame in this because he hasn't just been coaching his ass off either. 